welcome back to Chem Connection that provides you with regulatory news in between ChemCon conferences. In this Chem Connection, we discuss the EU's chemical strategy for sustainability with Christina de Avila of DG Environment. Also in this Chem Connection, the developments of India REACH and we will see where the things stand on UK REACH authorizations. Of course, much more on these topics and many more interesting developments at ChemCon Europe 2022, end of March in London. More than a year ago, the European Commission presented their chemical strategy for sustainability towards a toxic-free environment. A very ambitious strategy. I asked Christina and Avila how they are planning to get there. In this strategy, we have two overarching and mutually supportive objectives. One, boosting innovation for safe and sustainable chemicals. And the other, increasing the protection of health and environment. We also have what we call three key enablers. Simplification and coherence, knowledge and science, and international dimension. The strategy intends to create a shift towards new chemicals and materials that are inherently safe and sustainable from production to end of life. Safe and sustainable chemicals must become the EU market norm, and this will be a win-win for the protection of people and the environment and for the competitiveness of the European industry, which needs to regain global market. How does this support the green transition of the chemical sector and its value chain? And can you define concrete actions? The, the strategy is the key to support the green transition of the chemical sector and its value chain, including by promoting EU's open strategic autonomy for those critical chemicals that are needed to build the technologies that we need to achieve climate neutrality. Now, to arrive at that situation where chemicals are safe and sustainable by design, we have quite a long list of actions. We need to develop criteria for safe and sustainable by design chemicals. We need to establish an EU-wide support network to promote the cooperation and the sharing of information across the sectors and the value chain and provide technical expertise on alternatives. We are committed to ensuring financial support for the commercialization and uptake of safe and sustainable by design chemicals, materials and products, and the relevant EU funding and investment instruments and public and private partnerships. We are mapping and addressing safe and sustainable by design skill mismatches and competence gaps and ensuring adequate skill at, skills at all levels, including in vocational and tertiary education, research, industry, and amongst the regulators. We will establish in close cooperation with the stakeholders key performance indicators to measure the industrial transition towards the production of safe and sustainable chemicals. And finally, we will ensure that legislation on industrial emissions promotes the use of safer chemicals by industry in the EU by requiring on-site risk assessments and by restricting the use of substances of very high concern. In my conversation with Christina, we cover a whole range of other topics related to the EU's chemical strategy for sustainability. From the rationale behind the strategy, the ways and tools for innovation, one of the main pillars of the strategy, as well as another important pillar, protection and prevention. Furthermore, we talk about harmful chemicals and why they are still present in consumer products. And a lot more. So it's highly recommended to watch Christina's masterclass. No longer in the EU, but still very close, the UK. I asked Julius Water of EPA, what about the Brexit cake? Is the UK deviating from EU on authorizations already? Yeah, the, the, the Brexit cake, uh, uh, cheered. Good question. Um, so the, the reality is that at the moment, uh, what's happening in the UK really is very much based on, uh, on the EU recommendations. Like I said, the transitional authorizations uh, basically take uh, whatever ECA said as gospel uh, for the Secretary of State uh, uh, to decide. And in terms of the substance recommendations, the scope uh, of the substances is absolutely directly drawn uh, from the European uh, list of recommendations by the Member State Committee in Helsinki on which substances should be added to Annex, uh, Annex 14. But to be fair, uh, the UK uh, has taken some steps uh, which differentiate UK authorization already from, uh, from European ones. Um, many of them are actually, uh, quite frankly, uh, good ones in my opinion. Uh, some are practical, like for example, the latest application dates for substances 44 to 54. I'm not going to name them because they have very complex uh, chemical names. Uh, but they're the latest additions of the EU to uh, the authorization annex. Uh, well, um, those have been pushed a year into the future uh, in the UK in terms of application and sunset date. So uh, you were able to apply for those in the UK until 30th of June 2022 and, and uh, uh, what's it called, the uh, sunset date is, uh, is 18 months later. Um, the inclusion uh, of new substances, so the UK has uh, reviewed uh, the 9th and 10th uh, recommendation by, uh, by ECHA 
And this is where it gets quite interesting. They have only retained uh, DCHP and uh, sodium octoborate to uh, go onto the UK authorization list. And the reasons for not uh, adding the other substances is really quite interesting. Uh, in some cases, it's really quite similar uh, to what's happening uh, in Europe. Remember, these recommendations from ECHA, they are not yet adopted by the Commission, so it's not yet in the European Annex 14. Um, so in this case, uh, the EU is also considering, for example, that uh, tetraethyl lead should not be put on the uh, authorization list because industry has made a voluntary commitment to substitute. And the, uh, uh, the document from the HSC uh, says that explicitly, that that's the grounds why the UK uh, does not recommend uh, its inclusion in, uh, in the UK Annex uh, 14. Um, then there is a TMA, that's a, another complex uh, uh, substance. Um, there it's quite interesting. They say uh, there's already a different regulation in the United Kingdom which regulates the safety for workers uh, related to the use um, uh, of, the, of, of this substance. Uh, and therefore, authorization doesn't add any value. And that really is a deviation from what would happen in Europe, uh, where that argument... Uh, unless there's a European level um, uh, legislation in place that covers both human health and environment would never be retained, uh, which I always found a shame. So this is, this is rather a good thing. Also a good thing, at least for me, is to receive an update on India REACH. I asked Gagan Kumar of REACH Law about the main requirements under India REACH and the related expected costs. So as we see, uh, there are three uh, major regulatory tools that drives India REACH. Uh, first is uh, notification compliance. Second is uh, priority substance compliance and third is uh, hazardous chemical compliance. And this hazardous chemical compliance is coming from these existing rules and is mainly for local manufacturers and uh, importers, uh, local importers in India if they are dealing in hazardous chemicals. And let's see uh, what it means in detail for some of these uh, uh, requirements. So uh, coming to the notification compliance so all Indian manufacturers, Indian importers or authorized representative uh, representing foreign entities shall notify to this division the existing uh, substances that they have placed in Indian territory uh, in quantities greater than one ton per annum. So below one ton uh, notification is not required. But after the expiry of the initial notification period, uh, all new substances have to be notified uh, at least 60 days prior to the date on which they are placed on the Indian territory in, of course, quantities greater than one ton per annum. And a notification uh, by the Indian manufacturer or importer or uh, authorized representative uh, shall include uh, information related to the notifier and uh, the identity of the substance, uh, its uses, uh, quantity of the substance uh, that is or will be placed in the Indian Territory and uh, its classification uh, and the other information like uh, you have to also provide uh, spectral data and so on. Hold on, you indicated notification and later registration applies to existing chemicals. Please define existing chemicals. The existing substance means uh, the substance or an intermediate which is already being manufactured, uh, imported, supplied or used in India or has already been placed in Indian territory prior to the expiry of uh, initial notification period. So all such substances uh, placed on Indian territory crossing one ton per annum threshold quantities will qualify for notification. And as such, uh, there is no list of existing substances. So uh, the authority will uh, use notification to make this inventory. And all notified substances shall undergo annual reporting requirements and uh, here the timelines are no later than 60 days after the end of each calendar year. Additionally, any changes or additions to information submitted uh, at the time of notification must be updated uh, during this annual reporting uh, process. And important is also you need to uh, update and include your safety data sheet according to UNS, uh, uh, UNGHS version 8 uh, in the notification dossier. And uh, there will be a fee, authority will charge a notification fee which ranges from 300 to 7000 euros 
and applies to per substance per legal entity. It varies uh, with tonnage band. More on India Reach in the full version of this video. In that longer version, Gagan explains among others who can notify and register substances under India Reach. Thank you for watching and above all, stay healthy!